to this day. 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 And as you guys heard Errol Spence when asked, whose fault do you think it was for the fight not happening? And they gave him an option. Do you think it was you? Or do you think it was Terrence? Or do you think it was both of you guys? And Errol Spence's response was, man, I don't know. If the fight happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Let me counterpunch. First off, if you know that your side, that your end, your team, absolutely positively wanted that fight, I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, if they made a valiant effort to make that fight happen, why in Hades would Errol Spence reply the way he replied? You know, this almost reminds me of Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua to a degree when asking Joshua what did he feel about the negotiations? Did he feel at fault? Was it Wilder's team? Was it their team? And at least Joshua said, I think it was both of our faults for the fight not happening at that particular time or whatever. You know, at least he included himself. Errol Spence, just, man, I don't know. And when people say, I don't know, instead of a definite answer, that gives you two options. It's either you don't know really what happened because you wasn't in charge or you don't want to take responsibility for your particular part in the fight not happening. It's only two ways you look at it. Because anybody that responds like that has to know they didn't make a valiant effort for that fight to go down. Counterpunch. See, I read people very well and... I did sense Errol Spence kind of like exhausted or tired of the questions asking about Terrence Crawford. You know, um, it's probably going to get to the point where he's going to feel like Floyd Mayweather, Floyd, um, Money Mayweather, where Floyd was just sick to his ears with people asking him about Manny Pacquiao. When is the fight going to happen? When are you going to fight Manny? Manny, 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 Manny. And to the point, he was just disgusted. Like, listen, don't ask me that. Don't ask those particular questions. You could ask me anything except that. <laughs> you know, and he's just flat out used to say, it's not going to happen. Oh, um, you guys just want this fight to happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> and maybe Errol Spence will get to that way. But I think Errol Spence doesn't have the verbal freedom that Floyd had. See, Floyd was cocky because Floyd could say whatever Floyd wanted to say. Because Floyd had the influence because Floyd was a cash cow. The problem with Errol Spence, Javante Tank Davis, Adrian Broner, even though Adrian is kind of the exception because 
he eventually branched out on his own, as you can see with BLK Prime. But the Charlos, all of these guys, okay, what they have in common, none of them are cash cows. You know, I listen to people's podcasts and we got the aerosexuals and, you know, we got the guys that are diehard Terrence Crawford fans. And you hear these guys justify so much for Errol. But the truth of the matter is none of these guys are cash cows. None of these guys are Oscar De La Hoya. None of these guys are Floyd Mayweather. None of these guys are even Manny Pacquiao. None of these guys are even Arturo Gotti level. Because they're not making that type of money. Maybe Gotti. Maybe, maybe. Okay? But they don't have, and because they're not those type of guys that are cash cows, that do just feel seats and you know, sell millions of pay-per-views or 900 to a million pay-per-view buys. Since they're not those type of dudes, they don't call, they don't demand anything, okay? That's all on Al Heyman. Al Heyman is the shot caller of that federation. The PBC fighters all answer to him. He tells them where to go. He tells them how high to jump, okay? He is the guy that does it all over there, okay? And listening to Errol Spence, I believe that Errol Spence doesn't have an answer for anybody. He doesn't want to go on uh, record saying, hey, this didn't happen because, you know, it was. I think he was exhausted and I think he's just tired of lying to people. So it's better just to say, dude, I don't know. Instead of saying, no, it was all Terrence fault, Terrence didn't want to fight. You didn't hear him say that. If that was the truth, that Terrence Crawford did not want that fight with Errol Spence, Errol would have told you right then and there. He would have told all of those interviewers when he was walking down that damn escalator that that was so. But we all know it wasn't so. That's why he really didn't have a pony in the show. That's why he really didn't make anything definite. That's why that I don't know response was so natural because he didn't want to blame anybody because he knows that he is at fault. He knows his part that he played. He knows that his advisor slash boss slash emperor slash whatever slave master is calling the shots and his name is Al Hammond. He knows that. You know, and it's good to catch someone when they're tired like that because maybe he would have responded in a different light or in a different way if, you know, he would have had his, you know, uh, politician hat on, you know, to, to have enough energy to tell those type of lies. But he wasn't. This was just a response from Errol Spence like, man, I don't know. If it happened, it happened. If it don't, it don't. Not, no, it's Terrence's fault. We tried to make... The fight happened. We gave him a good split. We sat down with him. No, it wasn't any of that. He's not even in particulars because I don't think Errol Spence really knows. You know, maybe he doesn't care. Maybe. You know, but for the most part, I see Errol Spence responding the way he responded simply because he knows what really went down and he does not call the shots on his side of the street. But you guys tell me what you think of Errol Spence's response when asked whose fault was it for the fight not happening, the undisputed welterweight fight not happening. Of course, please subscribe and you guys been counterpunch. Peace.